Oh, welcome, Wolf of Wolfettes. We are back with the brilliant Red Dead Redemption 2 on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And what we're going to be doing today is we are up in the Northern Mountains and we are dealing with the Murphy clan, which is a bunch of weird, incest, inbred, dodgy people that pretty much cut people up and do a load of weird, dodgy things, you know. So we're going to deal with them, take them all out, murder all the gits, and we're going to set up a new base camp. So hopefully the Pickertons will leave us alone. Because this is the kind of area where it's so dodgy and creepy that even the police don't come here. Because they don't want to deal with these kinds of dodgy people, you know. So we should be safe up here for a little while whilst we get some money and plan on leaving to Tahiti or Australia or whatever. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Now in the last video, you didn't really miss much. All we really did was talk to Dutch. He says he's going to go and do an extra mission with Mike somewhere involving something. And he wants me and Charles to head up into the mountains to uh, get us a new camp. So that's what we're doing right now. And we also worked with Sadie Adler to see if John Marston was still alive in the prison and if we can rescue him. And we discovered that he's actually out working in the fields. So I think once we've done this camp, we're going to go over there and we're going to uh, talk to Sadie Adler. And we're going to actually go and wait for John to be on the fields and rescue him. So that's what we did in the last video. We also discovered that Como Driscoll has uh, been captured by the police and is uh, due to be killed, like executed. So I think we're also going to be doing something with that in the future as well. Because he normally gets away, you know, the O'Driscolls uh, rescue him. So we're going to try and make it so this time he doesn't get rescued and he does get hung. And I definitely want to do that because, you, as you saw many videos back, Como Driscoll tortured the shit out of me. So if I can uh, take him down, I will do it. But yeah. Thanks, uh, I, want to <laughs> I was about to say goodbye, but yeah, let's, uh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's the end of the video, Wolf and Warfare, it's goodbye, but yeah, let's go and deal with this Murphy clan. Now, uh, I said to, I said to Charles that we're going to do this with dynamite, we're not going to do this the sneaky way, so I'm just going to chuck dynamite in there, flush them out, and then as they run out through the cave entrance, we'll shoot them all in the head, so that's how we're going to do it, I ain't got time for none of that sneaky rubbish. I'm just going to keep chucking them in there as I uh, slowly run down. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Damn, he kicked it at me. Did I blow his leg off? I blew his... Oh! Jesus! They're coming at me with machetes. Oh, damn, Charles don't give a shit, does he? Look at him just running in there like an absolute madman. I'm not sure I want to uh, loot any of these dodgy people because they look a bit a bit creepy, you know. I don't, I don't know what the hell they're going to have in their pockets, you know. So I, I don't really want to reach in their pockets looking for money because, you know, I'll probably pull out a human finger or some crap, you know. You <laughs> they are crazy. Someone's down here, she's alive. I don't hear anybody. I've got the TV pretty quiet, so that's probably why. Damn! <laughs> well, that's a bunch of them dealt with then, isn't it? Oh yeah, I can hear someone screaming there. Oh! Damn, that one had a boomstick. That one had a boomstick. Damn, that guy's bloody Terminator. Where's he going? You took him down. What's he doing? Let's get over here. What is he doing? Oh, Charles got him. Okay. <laughs> you see him? He's running in circles. Oh, there she is.
It's alright, miss. Stay away from me. It's, all, it's all right, don't worry. It's all right. It's all right. Relax. It's okay, miss. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. You're safe. It's okay. It's time to go. It's okay. Okay. Let's go. Where are you from? Antisburg. What do we do with her? Take her there and I'll go get the others. Sure. Miss, you okay to ride on my horse a little? I'll keep you safe. Antisburg, right? Yes. They, 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 um. It's okay, miss. The others, they, they killed them. You're safe now. Just try to breathe. They're animals. I know. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll look after you. I'll take care of you. Oh, Wolfie always looks after the ladies. It's all right, miss. It's all right, let it all out. I think she was one of the people that went missing with the stagecoach. Ain't no point trying to explain it. I haven't slept in days. You can sleep now if you want. I'll uh I'll just take you home, you know. What's your name, miss? It's okay. Meredith. You're gonna be home soon, Meredith. And this will all be over. Thank you. Where there we go. One of the mining cottages. Um, <laughs> if you get me to the main street, I can show you from there. Okay. All right, then. Just try to relax now. But yeah, I think Charles mentioned that a stagecoach went missing up in the mountains, and then uh, they couldn't find it. I guess the the Murphys or the Murrays or whatever they're called, they uh, must have took the stagecoach and. Probably brutally murdered everybody on it, and I guess they were keeping her as a pet and were probably going to cut her up as well. Probably even eat her, I don't know. They seem like a dodgy bunch of cannibals, don't they? But, you know, we'll take her back to Ansberg now. Ansberg is the little city that we saw in, I think it was in yesterday's video. Not yesterday, the day before. I think it was in that video when we were doing the uh, reconnaissance in the air, the air balloon when we were trying to find where John Marston was. So uh, I think we've already seen this place. This is one of the places where there doesn't seem to be many police, you know. I think I talked about this a couple of videos back, but some of the tans up here, they don't necessarily have any sort of civilised... Just head for the main street. It'll be easier to walk from there. Okay. But there ain't no, like, proper civilised policemen and stuff like that, you know. It's just, like, tan sort of justice, you know. So if you do something, the whole tan comes for you sort of thing, you know. Which in some ways is better, but... If they make a mistake and they take someone, beat them to death, and it ends up being the wrong guy, it's not always good. That's the reason why it is a lot of the time better to let the police do their job, because they can actually properly investigate and check if someone is guilty. Even the police make mistakes sometimes, but Tan Justice, even though it is great and it's good to see the Tan get together and punish somebody, at the same time, if they make a mistake and they beat someone to death, it's not the best, is it, you know? But if you do anything wrong in this Tan, or also, let me have a look on the map, because uh, it's, it's good to know. But if you do any trouble in Ansberg, and I think there's also another place, yeah, the Van Horn Trading Post, it seems like if you cause trouble here, it seems to be like all the tan comes for you. Like just a bunch of people will pick up their guns or people will start punching you and stuff. I'm not 100% sure about Ansberg. I think it's like that here, but it's definitely like it in the Van Horn Trading Post. Because if you walk into a bar and you punch someone, literally everybody wants to mess you up, you know? <laughs> it's bloody crazy. Look at all the dead bodies up there in... Uh, What's that called? Beaver's Hollow. Damn, look at all those bodies. That's the older ones I killed with a dynamite, and that's the one I opened fired on with Dead Eye. <laughs> Alright, let's get this woman back to her family. 
But yeah, I'll mention it again. If you didn't know, Arthur Morgan has tuberculosis and he is very, very ill. If you're wondering why his face is so pale. Works dry, you know. Yes. Oh. Oh. Thank God. Which place is yours? Up at the top of the hill. It's near the blacksmith. Mama. Ma! Ma! Meredith! She's alive! Oh, she's alive! You saw some pretty bad things, I'm afraid, ma'am. Murphy Brute got it. Oh, my darling. How did you manage oh, to... I just ran into them and found her. Oh, thank you. Here, let me give you this. No, oh, that, that's okay, ma'am. You just keep her warm and keep her safe. Mrs. Dowd? Oh, no. You leave me alone. You just leave me alone! Thanks, buddy. How you get on? Okay. Found a girl. I took her home. Oh. You and Micah find anything? Maybe. I think maybe. I found our old friend, Mr. Cornwall. You did? Yeah. He's buying a stake in the mine in Annisburg. Relentlessly ambitious fella, isn't he? Micah and I'll sniff about, see if he knows we're here, and exactly what his plans are. So, Dutch, did you miss me? I found her drunk as Saint Denis. You're back. How jolly, Miss it's O'Shea. Funny, you Shit. Back Who and drunk. The master, the Lord Molly. God, all my calm down. I won't be ignored. Josh Vanderlyn, I honored him. I ain't her. I ain't even stooge. Calm yourself. You don't owe me nothing. Miss. I don't owe you nothing. Nothing. Okay. I'll spit in your eye. I did. I told them. I'm sorry. Yeah, I told them, and I tell them again. Now I've got God's ear. You told who what? Mr. Milton and Mr. Ross about the bank robbery, and I wanted them to kill you. You did what? I loved you, you goddamn bastard. Go on, She's shoot me. Crazy. She ain't worth it. You told on me. Oh, you you betrayed so now, me. What? Just calm down. Arthur? Ah. She's a fool. Get her out of here. You know the rules. You are not so big now. Are we, Your Majesty? You. Take her. She knew the rules, Arthur. What the hell is wrong with you? Mr. Pearson, Mr. Williamson, get this body out of here and get it burnt. Okay. Now get back to work, all of you. Quit your lollygagging. All right. Get back to work. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, they're going to start having an argument now. I think Karen, because she's always drunk, is now going to argue with Mrs. Grimshaw for shooting that uh, bitch. That's Molly O'Shea. You don't really talk to her very much in this game, but she was Dutch's girlfriend. You may remember her all the way back when we was like in Chapter 2 and Chapter 3, you know. She was always with Dutch and sleeping in his tent. But Dutch sort of distanced himself from her and kept ignoring her over and over again. So I guess she felt unloved and then went crazy. And she told the Pickertons about our bank job. And she's pretty much the reason that we lost Hosea, John's in prison, and Lenny's got killed as well. So yeah, she's uh, a fucking moron pretty much. But yeah, so um, she's dealt with now at least. Yeah, so that woman we saw a minute ago, Mrs. Downs, that is Thomas Downs' wife. Now you know we did the mission where, I talked about this in the last video I think, where I was talking about how Arthur Morgan got sick with his tuberculosis. Um... We had to claim some money from Thomas Downs, which was her husband. Now, obviously, he didn't have the money. We beat him up. He coughed in my face. That's probably what gave me tuberculosis. But pretty much, he told uh, Arthur told Thomas to sell his house so that they could afford to pay the debt. So uh, we went back there a second time. Thomas Downs was dead. Uh, his wife, who we just saw, and his son... Uh, gave us our money, but they were leaving the house because, you know, they had to sell it to pay off the debt. And I think what has happened now, because she doesn't have no money, because we took the debt, it's our fucking fault, you know. More so Leopold. This is why I hate Leopold, you know. I hated him before I knew all of the crap he's pretty much caused for me. But this is why I really hate him once I found this stuff out. But um, there, I think she's now become a prostitute to get money to survive, so... Yeah, it's um, it's not the best, you know, it's not the best. So yeah, I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to have something to eat. I'm also going to have a quick shave. And then I think we are going to go and see Sadie. Yeah, we're going to go and see Sadie Adler. And we are going to go and try and rescue John Marston from prison. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly uh, sort myself out a little bit because I'm an absolute state. And then I'm going to see if I can fast travel somewhere close by. I think I've still got my fast travel map, and I I should still have it. And then we're gonna we're gonna fast travel there because uh, I want to get as much progress done in these videos. So I'm going to start fast traveling a bit more often now because I've been running around a lot, and I have showed you guys practically all the different terrains, you know. And there still will be a lot of running around in that. But when I have the opportunity, I will fast travel from now on. But I'm just going to have myself a stew. Oh, damn. It, things are really going tits up in this uh, area, ain't they? How you doing, uh, Miss o uh, Brimshaw? Grimshaw? How you feeling about Molly? I'm feeling she got exactly what she deserved. That's what I figured. Yeah, if Mrs. Grimshaw isn't wrong. I would have done the same thing if somebody betrayed my gang. How comes yes, hello, every... Oh, fuck yourself. You're just a walking bag of nerves, ain't you? Don't turn on me too. It's pretty pathetic. Leave me alone, you sad man. Just go away, Arthur. <laughs> you sad man. This is the second time I have tried to have a goddamn stew and Mr. Pearson has picked it up and walked away with it. I'm going to have myself a coffee though because it will refill my dead eye. Then I'm going to have a shave and I guess I'm just going to have to eat some of my own food. Oh look, Leopold has now got a mission for me. I might need to have a second coffee after this because the coffee doesn't really fill up your dead eye a massive amount, you know. You normally need to have probably two or three, maybe. Two should be all right, though. I don't get why Arthur throws a bunch of it on the floor. I don't know how many you can take. I think you can only take two. I'm not sure, though. It's nice to have some free coffee, I guess, you know, because I very rarely buy coffee. This missions with Leopold is actually pretty important, even though they're technically side missions. They they don't really feel like side missions to me. Oh, okay. We actually didn't need to have any stew. We're actually very high on our stats. How you doing, Bill? How you doing, my friend? I want to talk to the Reverend because he's not actually drunk anymore, so it'd be nice to have a chat with him. So let's go have a chat with him. Is that, uh, who's that? Oh, that's Charles. I thought it was Javier. I ain't had a chat with Javier either. I like Javier. Let's go see if he's got anything to say. What did you say? Why don't you sit here away from Micah? <laughs> yeah, fuck Micah. Can I talk to Micah? I don't even like Micah. Come on, stop sleeping. I'm 
okay. Did I say anything? I didn't hear it. What's that look for? Okay, alright, whatever then. Right. So I'm going to have a shave. I'm going to talk to the Reverend if it's possible. And we're going to talk to Leopold. Just because I need to get those missions. Oh, this is going to be nice. This is going to be very, very nice. There we go. The problem is though, the more shaved your face is, the more sick you look. I think because because the beard covers half of your face, it sort of blocks out all of the white, all the whiteness of your face a bit, you know. So when you have a don't have a very close shave because it does sort of make you look a little bit. I look a little bit dapper now, don't I? But yeah, look, it makes you look a bit a bit horrible if you shave completely. Where's the Reverend gone? Oh look, there's Uncle pissed as always. I think he does the same thing in Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption One. Oh well, right. Let's go talk to Leopold the Cock. I mean, to be honest, it is his fault I'm ill. If he wasn't making me go around collect collecting all these bloody debts and he made someone else do it, I might not actually be ill. But at the same time, it's karma, you know, because Arthur Morgan doesn't have to do it. Because I think when it comes to the bit with Thomas Downs, I think the main reason why I think that is the reason you've got tuberculosis, it probably is that, you know, but I don't know if it's ever confirmed because I... When I played this, I was so distracted all the time that I missed a few things. That's why I'm happy I'm doing it again on YouTube. But I think after a while, you can ignore the debts, you know. But after a while, once you've done all the story missions, I think it forces you to do the one with Thomas Downs. I don't think you have a choice at all. Worried. Really worried. <sighs> Me too, Uncle. What's going to happen, you know? To everybody. Yes, folks is gonna make a choice. Whether they live or die. And you? I don't have that choice no more. I'm just trying to help others see clearly. That's my choice. You're a good man, Arthur Morgan. A good man. Yeah, I feel like because I've got tuberculosis now, he's um, he's starting to... Because obviously we've been a bad guy throughout this game. It's as simple as that, you know. We've been killing people and we've been robbing people. We've been doing bad shit, you know. Whether you're doing it honourably or badly, you're still being a bad guy, you know. Simple as that. And um, I think now he's ill and, you know, there's a possibility of him dying. He's, uh, he's starting to see things a little bit more like a human being and not like a bad guy gangster. So I think he's having a few regrets now. But I've been playing like a pretty damn honourable person wherever I've had the opportunity, you know. I've just been making choices in this game how I would do it in real life, you know. But for some reason it says I've been in the middle. Because like I said, I said this way right the way back near the beginning of this playthrough. Nothing you do throughout this game really changes the bottom, you know. You get, you get a little bit of movement, but not much, you know. But then when you start getting into later things and you start making choices, it gives you like massive differences, you know. Like it also affects, you know when I keep seeing that reindeer in that cutscene, that deer. That also changes depending on how you've been playing. I think if you're a bad person, it changes into a wolf. <laughs> so what are you trying to say? Wolves are bad people? What's that all about, Rockstar? Yeah, sorry for talking so much. There's just so many things to talk about, you know. So many things I want to mention, you know. It's nice to talk when I play these games. That's why I do it, you know. It's an experience for us to share. If I don't talk, what's the point, you know. I may as well just do a flipping long play of me not talking, you know. No commentary like all the other lazy gits. How you doing, you fucking weasel? Hey, Strauss. How are you? About... About how I look. Okay. Are you, um, are you perhaps available for some work? Debtors? Yes. I guess. Your commitment to your duties is admirable. <coughs> you know, Mr. Morgan, you are... Well, I'm sorry for you. Hmm? No, never mind. I didn't... Look, Strauss. You take care. I ain't dead yet. No, of course not. That's what I was saying. I... Uh, I... A debtor, Strauss. Who owes you money? Well, uh, there's a deserter from Fort Wallace. Head to him first. They're looking for him out on the road near Three Sisters. Man's name is J. John Weathers. J. John Weathers. Then there's a miner over in Annisburg. He's called... Well, he's called Arthur. <laughs> like you. Huh. <laughs> Arthur Londonderry. Family man, desperate, you know the type. Couldn't one of the boys do this? I tried. They lacked your... Vigor. Vigor, huh? 
Uh, take care, uh, uh, Mr. Morgan. Individuals that owe you gang owe the gang money are marked on the map. Yeah, I already know that. I'm not quite sure why you're telling me that. I think I'm going to do these because I've actually got time to do these. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do we're going to do this one first, I think. Yeah, J. John Weathers. Okay, we're going to do this one first. There's two to do. We've got one person who's a deserter from Fort Wallace. I think Fort Wallace is where like the American army are hanging out. So he's a deserter from there. And then we've got another person who works in the mines that we need to rob from, you know. And they're probably two genuinely nice people, you know, that are just a bit down on their luck, you know. And they've been in a bit of a desperate situation. You never know if you should feel sorry for them because at the end of the day, you know, they took a they took a um, loan, you know, from a stupid source. But not everybody is able to get a loan from a bank because it, the the requirements to get a loan from the bank is always difficult, you know, because they want to make sure they're going to get their money back. So, people in the most need of a loan are normally the people that can't get a loan. That's the bloody problem, you know. So they re they resort to going to loan sharks, which is a stupid idea. Because they're not going to treat you nicely. They're probably going to ask for even more money back than the bank would, you know. And then there's a chance of them killing you or breaking your bloody legs if you don't pay it back, you know. So it's always a risk, you know. So it is their own fault for doing it, you know, getting the loan, you know. So when I go there and beat them up because I need my money back, it is somewhat their fault because they did take the loan in the first place but at the same time they're in a desperate situation near enough everybody we've dealt with in this game besides like maybe one with these debts has been a family person you know so they're trying to look after their family all of them have got jobs as well you know it's not even like oh they're just a bunch of unemployed lazy shits they've actually got jobs you know so it makes me feel bad that i'm going to punishing them i'm gonna to have to leave you i'm afraid your, your legs gonna to have to suffer because uh, i'm busy i'm busy nicking people's money but yeah, we've got to deal with this guy first, uh, who is a deserter of Fort Wallace. And we're going to get the money off of him. And then after that, I think we can go and do the one in the mines. I've got about 18 minutes left. That's the main reason why I'm not heading over to Sadie Adler now. Because uh, I won't be able to rescue John that quick. So we're going to have to do that in the next video. The next video, if I'm thinking correctly, might be very action-packed and quite a lot of story stuff. We are making some decent progress, you know. It's when we have to start doing stuff with the Indians. That's where the game, once again, takes a weird turn, you know. Because the stuff where you get stranded in Guam, that was unnecessary. Very unnecessary. I wasn't happy about that. And this whole stuff with the Native Americans is... I don't know. It's... It, it, they're, they're, like I said, I think I said it in the last video, or I might have said it in this video. They're fun missions, but it's just... They just don't... They just don't fit in very well, you know. Yeah, you could rescue those dudes because they've been captured by bounty hunters, but I don't know whether they're bad or good, so I just stay out of it, you know. I don't want to accidentally rescue a rapist from bounty hunters, you know, because uh, <laughs> I won't feel too good with myself, and I'll probably get negative honour. Where is this bloody dude? I wish the one in Ansberg was first, because it's closer. I shouldn't be following this red waypoint thing, because it leads you in such a stupid way. Uh, it's not doing a bad job at the moment, but sometimes it leads you the most dumbest route of all time, you know, where it would have been ten times quicker to just run across the field. I feel we've been here before, haven't we? Yeah, we've been here before, ain't we? This is where we came on the uh, hunting trip. Yeah, let's have a look. I think this is where we came with Jose on the bear hunting trip. I think. Yeah, because that's, yeah, that's the lake. Because we, like, camped here with Jose. Then we came round here, and uh, we... Um, Started following the tracks up to where the bear was. There's that, that, that veteran homestead right there. That is actually a very important location. You're going to meet someone. I think you're going to get a mission around here, a side mission. And he's a very top guy. You know, he has a nice light set of missions for you to do. So uh, make sure you have a look. Oh, actually, that question mark on the map is probably it. You'll know who he is because he's the dude that's missing his leg. <laughs> but he's a, he's a pretty fun guy, you know. Got some nice missions to do. A lot of the strangers in this game have got good missions. They've done a very good job with side missions in this game. They're actually fun to do, you know, instead of just being a chore like they are in most games. It's got the same sort of side missions as, like, The Witcher 3, where they just feel like they're providing you with good content and they're not just a side thing that's shoved in to flesh the game out, you know. Right, what's going on over here?
Jay John Weathers. They call me Snow Goose now. Whatever they call you. You borrowed money off of Leopold Strauss. The bills come due. This ain't the best time, sir. This ain't the best time for anyone. Mr. Strauss knew it was a long-term proposition. The debt is due. Okay. I got supplies meant to last through the winter. You can take them. Just, is there any way you can help me? I stay out here. There won't be anyone to pay you. I ain't here to help. I'm here to collect. We're all, all of us up against it. Look, there's men after me. They're killers. I ain't a deserter, just an objector. It ain't right. If there was another way than running, I need your help. Shut up. Please. I... Up here. It's him. It's too late. Form up. We shoot on sight. I clear off, sir. Ah, shit. Well, seeing as I'm here, I'll, I'll do what I can for you. Alright, let's help him out. For some reason, I've not got me weapons with me, so I'm going to have to use my bloody pistol, Matt. Oops. Alright, let's deal with these kids. What the hell? Oh, right in the top of the head. I shouldn't be standing out of cover like this, especially when I'm using a crappy gun like this. I mean, they are good pistols, you know, but I, I prefer running and gunning when I've got my Lancaster up here. That looks like Nathan Drake. <laughs> it looks like Nathan Drake with his blue shirt. Is that all of them? Oh, for fuck's sake! It's all right, my darling. You can come out. Oh crap! I probably should have helped you fix the damn wagon. We could probably still save something. Really now? Look. You can take the silver locket for the debt. Damn the debt. Just get her somewhere safe. Go on. Thank you, fella. You know, there ain't enough kindness in this world, that's for sure. But you... I don't know nothing about kindness. I feel like me and Arthur Morgan are quite, are quite uh, very similar in the kinds of things we do, you know. Like, I don't feel like I'm a kind person. I always feel like I'm an angry piece of shit, but then people call me kind, you know. So, I feel like me and Arthur Morgan would get along very well. Right, um, okay, now we can go to Ansberg and we can collect the other debt. Uh, you, you can take the locket if you want, but I, I don't know if it counts as bad or good honour, but I, I assume that you're going to get... You, you should be rewarded for... Uh, you know, telling him to just leave. So he's a deserter from Fort Wallace, which is where the American army is, like I said. So if he's an objector and not a deserter, then I guess he's he's not wanting to kill Native Americans, because that's what the that's what the American army were doing at this yeah. point. Pretty much just ruining the Native American's life, you know. So I guess he's met a girl, a Native American, and he's shacked up with her. It looked like she might have been pregnant, so I guess that's why he was leaving. So he was a deserter, but he just wasn't, you know. He just didn't want to shoot his, uh, his girlfriend's families I guess so I mean, why the hell would you take the locket what kind of what kind of person has actually took the locket you know even if you're trying to play this game as like a bad guy and you just want to because I think there is a bad ending for this game there is a good ending and I think there's like a maybe a middle ending I'm not sure about that though I think when I played this on my own I might have got a somewhat middle ending maybe or maybe probably a good ending actually I don't know nothing in this game feels like good to me everything in this game is always like hmm Am I doing something wrong? Ah, oh. but yeah, we're going to head over to Ansberg now. We need to find somebody called Arthur, who is a miner that owes money, and we're going to get the money. You know, like, like I just don't understand why you would take the locket. You know, 
I know, yeah, they do owe money and it's their own fault for getting into debt, but at the same time, how can you, in good conscience, stand there next to someone who is just trying to look after his girlfriend, who everybody in this area is trying to kill? How could you just take money from him or take his supplies? It's, it's, it's just not right. It's not right, you know? And this is coming from somebody that is not a fan of people. Oh god, I think there might be wolves attacking a man over there. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I'm not getting involved, I'm busy. Actually, this might be the area where there's a werewolf. I swear somebody told me there's a werewolf in this game, because you see a man, right? They run... I, I'm going to talk about it, because I probably will never... Uh, I'll probably never actually see it, because I've not seen it in my own playthrough, but... You, you see a naked man running through the forest, and you hear him howl. He does like a dodgy howl. And um, after that, a bunch of normal wolves attack you out of nowhere. And I think it has to happen a few times, and eventually you discover that there was a werewolf or something, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure, though. I haven't actually done it. But it is somewhere in this area, because I remember all these trees and all of this grass and stuff. So it does happen somewhere around here. Something involving a werewolf or something. I might be getting that completely wrong, but it might be worth investigating. So yeah, just look around in the area that I'm currently in. So let me, let me show you the map so you can look around if you wanna. But yeah, I guess around like this sort of section here, something maybe. I could be wrong though, so don't quote me. Maybe Google it or something, cause uh, that's just what I heard. And I just kept seeing this naked dude running through the woods howling, and then out of nowhere a real, a real wolf appeared and attacked me. So it was always a bit weird. And apparently it's supposed to happen a few times and eventually you discover something or whatever. Find Arthur Londonberry, all right. I'm going to get off my horse. I'm going to leave my horse up here. I'm going to get my weapons, actually, because um, if we end up in a bloody combat situation, I want to actually have my proper weapons with me. What are you so worked up for, Bolt? Calm down, girl. Calm down. Oh, shit. I nearly, nearly angled my gun. What's the matter, Bolt? Calm down, girl. Come on, Bolt. Come on. Come on, girl. It's all right. It's all right. Just a bunch of grumpy wolves. Should be all right, you know? You've had a, you've had a wolf with you the whole of this game, you know? Come on, there you are. There you go. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah, you're a good girl. Lovely. It is a miracle that we've managed to keep Bolt alive for the whole of this game. You know, because like I said, your horse does die and you have to buy a new one if it dies, you know. And it will start off with zero bonding, you know. So the fact we've kept this horse alive for so long is a goddamn miracle. Just having some food quickly so I can start filling up my... Uh, Dead eye. We're trying to mine coal here. Question the guard. You know where I can find Arthur Londonderry? Arthur Londonderry? I think you're going to want to speak with the foreman. Head way down there towards the coal face. Question the foreman. Okay. Damn, it's a bit, bit cozy in here, isn't it? I would hate to be a miner. What would be good for me anyway? What with the asper and that? But yeah, I wouldn't want to be down here in these confined spaces. Looks like dead mines from World of Warcraft. <laughs> Arthur London there. She here? I'm sorry, feller, but you're too late. Arthur's dead. <laughs> The man's dead. What's wrong with you? Oh, boy. You can't exactly beat it out of him now, can you? <laughs> you might get something off his widow just across from Butcher's Creek. But I'd hurry. You ain't gonna be the only one a-knocking. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, I ain't the godforsaken moneylender. Okay then. The known location of the target has been updated on your map. Okay, so Lon Arthur Londonberry has died. Oh, brilliant. We're going to get that money back then, are we? How do I... Um, Look out. Am I going the right way? Oh, okay. There's multiple entrances to this uh, mine. I like how there's loads of guards here. <laughs> come on then, pony. Come on. Where are you? Come on, Bolt. Come on, good girl. That's it. Oh, 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 careful, Bolt. Careful. Do, 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 I just talked about how you haven't died yet. <laughs> so don't start doing stupid things. Yeah, that's it. Right, come over here. Come over here. Right, careful. Careful, girl. Careful. I don't want you to end up dead, you know. Got through the whole game with you alive and then you die now. Nah, that's just stupid. 
Oh, this is pretty close by. We've got about five minutes, so I reckon we've got time to go there. So let's quickly go. If it ends up being a bit longer, this video, it doesn't matter too much. But I'm going to have to take a break after I finish this video. Wait for the kids to finish screaming in the playground. And then I've got about an hour to record one more video. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I've always, I'm, I'm always living by the clock. It's a very stressful life to live by the clock, you know. But everything I do is always on a time schedule. And it's really bloody annoying, you know. Because if I don't follow the clock, I can't get videos done for YouTube, you know. And it's very stressful around holidays, you know, when I'm going to be on holiday from work. Because like I've mentioned many times, I've not got time to record when I'm on holiday because there's just too much racket and noise going on and people in the house doing stuff. So I've got no chance to record. So uh, when it gets to this period, it's uh, a bit of a pain in the butt. But let's go talk to his uh, wife and see what uh, we're going to do about this money. Because we need to get our money. Otherwise, uh, Leopold Strauss is going to be uh, poor, isn't it? Oh, we're already there. That was quick. I felt like, I felt like we had to run quite far. Oh, no. You going to pack all your stuff, Angel? I don't want to. <coughs> Mrs. London, Derek. <coughs> Off his dead. I know. I'm sorry for it. It's just... We lent Arthur some money, you see, and... So it was you. You son of a bitch. What do you want now? You want my boy's shoes? You want the food out of our bellies? What little there is? You want me to lie down for you? No, no. I... Arthur gave everything to pay your bills. Everything. And now there's some fellas coming to take the house. There ain't nothing left, mister. Uh, I just wanted to say the debt's canceled and to uh, take this. It won't bring your husband back, I know. You need money, and I don't. Well, you're a good man. I just wish you'd done it before he worked himself into the grave. But, you know, maybe you and your friend that lent him the money could do things differently, like not threaten a man. Excuse me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I really am. Now, we have to go and uh, talk to Leopold now, but I'm not going to have enough time to do that, so if you want to see that, you're going to have to wait for the next video, because the, uh, the break's about to start in the playground, so if I carry on recording, they'll be screaming and that, and it will distract me from an important moment in the game, you know? So yeah, thanks for watching, Wolf. Well, let's hopefully you enjoyed this video. Next time, it's going to be quite a, a good video. We're going to have a chat with Leopold about all the crack he keeps bloody doing, with all the debts and all that. And we're also going to hopefully save John Marston and get him out of jail. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. At least I said uh, thanks for watching at the correct time now and not at the beginning of the video. <laughs> like, share and join the pack today.